Welcome to our video on facilitating student interaction and group work. Getting students to participate in class and in group work can be both challenging and rewarding, regardless of the language of instruction. This video will discuss strategies you can try in your EMI course to get your students to participate in discussions and group projects. You can put students in groups based on where they sit or by their last name, but you can also group them in other ways, such as by their knowledge of the content, English proficiency level, personality type, grouping more talkative students with more quiet ones, or stronger students with weaker ones. Experiment with different grouping structures and see what works for you and your students. Each grouping scheme has benefits and drawbacks that are influenced by content, culture, student personality type, many things. So the first strategy is to get students engaged in the content and ideas. Students are more engaged when the questions or group project is related to their current lives or to their careers. For activities or questions related to careers, be sure that you make the connection explicit and clear to students. Often, they don't fully understand the jobs they will be doing, so it helps when you give them background and details. When students share their own examples or questions with each other, they help each other learn. If you can create discussions that get students to learn new ideas from each other, this can help them expand their understanding and critical thinking. For example, you can ask students to share an example of how a particular topic relates to jobs relating to the class that you are teaching. The second strategy is to engage students in critical thinking. You can do this by avoiding display questions. Display questions are ones where students generally know the answers. Teachers use them to review material, but to students, the questions are either boring or obvious. If you are teaching a course on ethics, a display question might be, how would you feel if your best friend stole money from you? Well, obviously, everyone would feel bad. That's not really a natural question. Instead, ask higher order, open-ended questions. With these, Students often don't know the answers, and they have to think more deeply about the topic. For example, they might have to make connections between different aspects of a topic. An example of a higher order question is, how would different aquaculture methods result in financial difficulties for a fisheries farmer? This question requires students to give longer answers and make connections between different topics fish farming, economics, social concerns, etc. Students need more time to answer higher order questions. You can let them discuss their answers in small groups for five minutes, ask them to write their answers down, and then have group share with answers with the larger group, leading to further discussion or clarification if needed. Be sure to write these higher order questions on the board Give students positive feedback when they do try to answer these types of questions and ask follow-up questions as needed to ensure that they learn the content.